Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Star Road Mapping. Today we're going to quickly go over uh, texture scrolling. So it's very simple, not too much to it. Uh, you just want to select the model you want to scroll, go down to your bottom right info section here, and you have a bunch of different, you have up to 15, or actually up to 16, so you can do zero as well, 16 different slots for texture scrolling. So you can select any one of them. So I'm going to select one for this ocean part here, or this lake part. And you can just go into scripts in the top right, then go down to panners here. So now anything you change in this slot here, unit one, is going to affect how this scrolls. Now, I'm, again, I'm using version uh, 3.2. Whenever I use version 4, it seems like this has changed. And if it's changed for you, you don't see this, I would highly recommend using version 3 if it's not fixed in version 5 already. And you're not going to, it's not going to reflect. So whatever you do in this is not going to reflect in game when you load it in game. It's still going to be still. This is just going to give you um, a representation of how it will look. And you're going to have to manually put the code for the scrolling in your map uh, code file. But this will this will help you pick out the correct values that you're going to use for that. So let's uh, in the bottom right here you see you have main U, main V, aux U, aux V. Uh, this, uh, the main is just going to be the main texture but if there's an auxiliary texture applied to it you can also scroll that auxiliary texture. Let's see if this one has that. Um, it does not look like it has an auxiliary texture. If it does, you'll see an auxiliary texture next to it here in the top right, and uh, it will be in the texture archive as well. Let's see if I have any, so I can give a good example of that, but it doesn't really look like I do. But either way, all you need to know is that when you're scrolling it, if it has a secondary auxiliary texture to it, you're going to want to scroll that too, or else it, the auxiliary texture is going to stay still while the main texture moves. So let's just uh, try it out. So I want to, I want this to go down and to the left. So it already looks like it's doing that. So I just, I'll just move it to 150, and boom, that's good enough for me. So you see it's scrolling now. Now let's say um, it's only doing that because I have it rotated. Let's say I didn't want to rotate it, so I have it like this, and I want to move it down to again down and to the left. So I'm also gonna have to move this as well. So it's gonna be 150 on the negative side. Okay. Perfect. And it's going a little fast, so you can just adjust it as much as you want. Another thing to keep in mind is the delay between updates. So you have four panels here as well. This is going to be for each one of these. So this is the main U one, this is the main V one, this is the aux U one. Uh, actually, you can't see my mouse, I don't think, unfortunately. I should have turned that on, but you see these ones I'm highlighting here. This is main V. Aux U and Aux V. And what, was, what it's going to do is it's going to delay, it's going to pause basically every time it, it adjusts the, the UVs. So you see it's kind of like lagging now. And you can, depending on the type of scroll you're trying to do, this can be very useful. If you want it to be more jittery, like that. And the way this is reflected in the actual code, I'll, I'll pop up some of the, the code so you can see. So I'll just go to any map I have here. Okay, so I have some, this is what the actual scrolling code looks like when you put it into your map. Uh, this is the decomp version, so it's going to look different if you're using Starrod scripting language. I'm sorry about that. Nothing I can really do. This is the this is the programming language that I use for Wish Upon Abyss. Um, it's 
it's the same concept. It's just the the names of the actual instructions are gonna are gonna differ in in syntax. Uh, but you'll kind of just find a a similar texture scrolling script in an existing map and just uh, follow this kind of as a as a guide, but use those instructions in, in place of it. So you see um, the variables here. The variables are going to be essentially what we've done here. So I have 150 minus 150, and I want positive 150 to apply to main U, and I want negative 150 to apply to main V. So if I was redoing this for that map, I would make this one 150, this one 150, and I would make this one negative 150. And you want to make sure it's plus and minus. And then I would set the text pan offset for, since I'm not, so this one here, this one's for auxiliary textures because this is, this one's checked. So if I was one on the second slot here, that means it's for the auxiliary part of the texture. So this is just for the main one, which is, so I would just delete this one if I was doing that. I would take this and I would put event one, or variable one here, and then variable two here. Again, just look at how it's written in the original Star Road script. I'm sure it's not too different. You'll kind of understand it. Um, it should be pretty similar. And you just want to make sure that you also name the model you want to scroll. So like for here, it's named Ocean. So you'd set text panner for Ocean. You'd set it to one. One is going to be, or the number here is going to be, again, slot so you can make it any slot you want just make sure that when you're making multiple different types of panners in your maps that they all have a different slot because if you're using the same slot for all of them only one of them is going to use it only one of them is going to work so if i was making a second one you see i have two here and then i have three four because this is how many different texture pans i have in the map okay and you also want to make sure that in the set text pan offset for your texture in, in your script is the same as the one up here. So this has to be the same as this one. And then you also need to make sure that you enable it. Same model. Okay. And you probably don't need to worry about the initial offsets. I mean, I've never used it. I don't know what the application purpose for that is, but perhaps there's a, there's a, a reason for it. But anyways, I believe that that covers pretty much everything about it. Um, again, just if you, if you want to make textures that, like for example, if you had if you if you had like a sign and it had multiple different images. And you wanted to flash back and forth between like the different images of that. You could make this like a crazy high number. Like you could just you could make this super high, like ten thousand, and then just make this also a high amount. So actually, I'll make it like fifty or something. Actually, maybe that's too much. Yeah, so like that, and you can see, so like if, if my texture had different images and it was like in a, like if I had like a, like a shop sign and then I had a, an in sign below it, I could have it kind of like just go through that list of signs by having a super high scroll rate and then just a big delay. Kind of like if it's like a like a TV screen or something flipping between channels or something. I don't know. There's a lot of different application that you could use scrolling for. I've done similar stuff like that. Uh, I just recommend playing around with it until you get what you need. And uh, see one thing I didn't cover. So for your if you're doing that, if you're doing delays between the scroll. 
So I'm doing 20 here. If I wanted 20, a 20 delay between scrolls, you just want to make it sleep 20, so 20 frames. And um, I, I don't think it's sleep in the Star Wars language. I think it's pause. I think it's pause. So you just want to make sure it delays 20 frames if you're doing that, or how many frames you want. Anyways, that should be it for texture scrolling. If you found this helpful, please like or like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.